live from Seattle, Washington, it's theCUBE, covering Smartsheet Engage 2019. Brought to you by Smartsheet. Welcome back everyone, you are watching theCUBE and we are here in Seattle, Washington at Smartsheet Engage 2019. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Jeff Frick. We're joined by Mark Klein, he is the principal at Populous. Thank you so much for coming on the show. My pleasure, thank you. So, you have a very cool job. <laughs> <laughs> give, give, tell our viewers a little bit about Populous and about what you do. Sure, so Populous is actually an architect firm. Our main uh, focus is architecture. Um, we're one of the largest sports architecture firms in the world, so we build stadiums and arenas and convention centers and airports and places that people gather is our bread and butter. There's over 500 worldwide employees that work on that. But we have an event office out of Denver, Colorado, where we take our architectural principles and apply them to major gatherings of people in, in the sporting world and other areas. And these are sporting <laughs> events include the includes, NC2A Final Four. Include the, the Final Four and the Olympics and all, all of your NFL major events that are not a regular season game. All of your NHL events that happen in stadiums, uh, outdoors, all-star games, uh, things like that. Any major event that's a non-standard event, um, they really call on us to help make sure that that goes off uh, without a hitch. Yep. Okay, all right, so yeah. talk a little bit about what it was like before you, what, what it was like before you used Smartsheet and, and sort of the, the headaches and the problems and, that, and now what life is like now. Sure, so a little more than 10 years ago when I joined the firm, uh, we had a, a good stable of events and events were still kind of just operating uh, off spreadsheets and back of napkins and drawings and, and things like that. Uh, as security and 9-11 was actually a major factor in kind of the growth of our industry where events now had to be planned a little more uh, with more scrutiny. Um, we needed a way to better pull our information together and get everybody to, 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 to collaborate on one set of drawings, one schedule, uh, who's doing what and when, uh, and, and Smartsheet has become that, that prime resource for all of our event planning. And, and, for, and for an event, there's so many outside contractors that you guys have to orchestrate with, whether Correct. it be the teams and the associations and the security and the venue and the, the concessions, the list goes on, right. transportation, on and on and on. Yeah, and so to be able to bring outsiders into your project and plan. And it's a new set every year with every event. So you think of the a Final Four, we're going to a new city every year. So every, I have literally eight months to work with a team to plan a major event that's going to be seen by hundreds of millions of people, and then I got to pick up and do it again in another city, and then another. And we're doing that across dozens of events across our, our team every year. So we may have a vendor that touches the system once, we may have someone who sees this once every third year. Um, so uh, within our um, environment, uh, we have extremely high turnover of people. Uh, we have very short period to get them up to speed and working with us. So Smartsheet has been really, really a big part of, hey, I need you to get in here, get your information in, work with the tool, get us the information, and, and guess what? You're going to get some feedback on this one too so that it benefits them. Right. It's just interesting to me that the, the level of granularity and detail, you know, we, get, we go to a lot of events, obviously. Sure. There's so much minutia that you have to keep track of from printing on the napkins, yeah. you know, to signage, et cetera. But at the same time, especially in the sporting world, you know, there can be huge changes, you know, especially say play out, you know, who wins a game changes the venue, you know, right? Oh. So how do you how do you use a tool to manage the both? The, the tremendous detail when you have the opportunity to plan versus the change of plan. <laughs> uh, we got to shift gears. Well, so, so we use a lot of the, the tools that Smartsheet has, has built into it for automation. So for example, at the Final Four, um, we don't know our teams until Sunday night. And that, that, that Monday we have decor going up, team specific decor. So locker room assignments, as soon as the, the game is final, uh, we send out notifications in Smartsheet to the decor printers that you're printing this graphic, this size, uh, these are the locker room assignments, these are the bus assignments. So all that is, is, is queued up and ready to go. Um, so a lot of those last minute things that you may think of, we've thought through them and are ready to trigger as many as we can. You're never 100%, but if we can get that 80%, 90% triggered and out the door, as soon as the, the decision is made or the team has decided, uh, that lets us deal with those others that are a little less uh, planned. 
So, but those are ones where you know, those are sort of the known unknowns. What right. about when you have the unknown unknowns? When things like bad weather can affect an event, or I mean, how do you, how do you use Smartsheet in to change on a dime it, it, when that happens? So, um, we, we plan and we plan and we plan. So for example, bad weather is something we have multiple plans for, but where Smartsheet comes into play is I have real time scheduling information sitting on my screen in a control room at an event. So if we have a weather event, we have two or three options that we can pick from, but I'm now looking at the real-time smart sheet schedule going, all right, if we select option one, be aware we're going to affect these items. If we go with option two, these are the items. So it's the information that has been gathered through that planning phase and everybody's put their information in, so I know what our action is going to cause and the ripple effects of those. And Reminds then, me of the then, smart, the choose your own adventures. When you were a kid, reading those choose your own adventure right, books. Right, you don't just want to open a door right. and guess what's there. <laughs> exactly. I want to open a door right. of a decision and know that this is the follow on effect and I can look at the schedule and the vendors involved of who I'm about to impact with my right. decision. Right. And do you have the com you have the comms and all that stuff dialed in there as well. Correct, yeah, so we're on radio and we're, you know, at these, these events we run control centers, so there's eight or nine of us sitting in a control room. Um, I, I send Mark Mater a picture every year of my smart sheet screen with some field of play behind it, be it a football <laughs> or a basketball field, and go, Mark, we're ready to go, keep it up, keep it running for the next few hours. Um, so, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a fairly intense time um, when, when we open doors or we turn on the cameras at those events, because uh, let's face it, there's 70,000 people sitting there, and there's usually uh, tri triple digit, 100 millions of people watching on television, so uh, it has to go right. It's a lot of pressure. Yes. <laughs> how do you deal with it? I mean, and how does your team deal with it? I mean, you're used to it, of course, sure. but is there? Uh, it's the confidence in the plan, I think, that has really shaped how we, we get to that point and don't, and don't um, overreact or, or get too uh, caught up in the moment. Um, so um, what we do within the planning of, of our events and, and with our staff and is, is we put everybody's tasks in, in Smartsheet, of course. So, my tunnel captain only has to focus on the 40 things that he or she is responsible for. So he may be standing in a team tunnel and we've extracted from the schedule, all right, Austin, here are your 40 items. Don't worry about every, all the chaos going around you because I've got 40 other people out working those items. So we filter schedules by either location or staff member so that they can put their blinders on and stay focused on their tasks. Um, and, and that's really how people can focus and stay, stay in the moment. What's coming next? What do I need to worry about? Because there's 4,000 light items in that schedule. I can't have him trying to figure out what are his right, uh, right. at that moment. Mark, I want to shift gears a little bit because you guys came from an architectural, ba the company's architectural background in building venues and stadiums. We just had the new Chase venue just got finished in San Francisco, mm -hmm. beautiful new facility. As, as the way you guys think about, it's kind of people-centric. It's venues for people and it's events for people. Right. What are some of the, kind of the guiding principles that make for a good event, a good venue from the people experience its point of view. So there's, there's really multiple sets of customers that I look at at every venue. Obviously we always start at the field to play. You, you got to get that right. It's got to be 100 yards long. It's got to oh, be. Wait, I thought they broke that rule the other day. <laughs> well, <laughs> we won't go there. Um, so field to play out. So you've got your competitors, your spectators, and then your operators. All three of those, we focus on all of them equally. Because if one piece of that triad doesn't work, then the overall experience doesn't work. So um, obviously the field of play honestly is the easiest part to deal with, but it's an important part. So you look at how a team is going to arrive at a venue, bus, whatever the case may be, so that they get to their locker room, get to their services and out to their field, and back and forth to media obligations. So you don't want to put a media workroom halfway across the stadium because then they're making a long trek. So little things like that in the, in the team component. Spectators, obviously there's could be 50 to, if it's a baseball park, 50,000 up to 70,000 in a stadium. Um, we want to ensure that they're going to fully enjoy their two to four hours in that building. Um, so we work on scheduling with our vendor. The, one of the biggest things we found in, the, in that area is we have really engaged with our contractors, the, the concession folks, because they were kind of operating on their own. So engaging concessions to say, don't be moving product when there are people in the building. Know when the timeouts are. We'll call you from control based on the schedule so that we're synchronizing building operations so that the customers aren't running out of water. Well, we didn't run out of water. We couldn't get it to you. So things like that are, okay. are really important to our planning. And then the group that really gets overlooked that I spend a lot of time on is the people that help build and get the building ready. Because if my vendors are having a rough time 
getting their things in the building or building the platform I've asked for or setting up a stage, they're just not going to be in a good frame of mind when the lights turn on. And I want everybody to be, yeah, let's go. We've had a great experience in the five days leading up to this event, whatever it may be. I'm ready now to put on a show. So we use Smartsheet so much with our vendors to help guide them through the build process, scheduling, load deliveries, in, out, um, getting stuff. their credentials, where they're going to park, where do I take my breaks, everything is there at their fingertips. So even the mom and pop vendors that I deal with, and there are quite a few of them from city to city, feel like they're as important as my AV company. So they're excited, they, they do their load in, they're like, hey, this is a great experience, and now they're here to help support the event. And then when I call and go, guess what, we have a problem, I need your help. They're going to be, sure Mark, what can we do? Right, right. Because they're, they're, they're enthusiastic and they didn't feel like I beat them up right. during that load-in That's period. Great. Well great it goes insight. back to the people-centric that you're talking about. Right. It's treating people like, like people, people yeah. not just that they are some cog in the wheel that they are expected to execute mm -hmm. you know, this task, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, happy staff deliver happy events. So what's next <laughs> in terms of, in terms of uh, broader adoption, in terms of more improvements that you're seeing on the pipeline? Um, so I'm really excited about the collaboration component that was announced today at the keynote. Um, I, I, we're an architect firm, so the base of all of our, plan, all of our events is a, a set of drawings. Drawings that show what we need, where it is, when it's going to happen. So all of our non-drawing material has lived in Smartsheet for 10 years. I'm now going to be able to bring those drawings in and get the collaborative information, the feedback. So we take a drawing, we'll send it to CBS and say, please mark up how you think we've drawn your broadcast compound. That has all been email. Now with this collaboration tool, it's going to live in Smartsheet. So I cannot tell you how excited I am about the collaboration component. Um, it's going to it's going to really streamline how we do our business. I, I'm, I'm kind of at loss for words to get in there and try it. <laughs> My staff is going to probably go, Mark, you can't go to any more conferences, but um, <laughs> there, uh, I, I think it's really going to be a great addition to our work process. Um, the other one that, that has been a personal part of mine, a uh, personal goal that I've seen is um, the adoption by our staff for the day-to-day -day work process. Um, I listen in the office, we have a big open work plan space and I listen for my staff going, I got to put this plan together or track this and I go, I, I literally will stand up and walk over, have you thought about using Smartsheet? And half of the time they haven't. And um, I will say, let me help you through it, let me get you started and see if it works for you. Um, so that organic growth of Smartsheet um, is, is the big step that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis um, to get staff introduced to a new way to work and be more collaborative of how they, they manage their information. So um, just that, that kind of growth is, is, is ongoing, um, but after I've uh, been to the conference, I can say, I got a little more knowledge about it. Let me, uh, let me uh, help you out a little bit and, and get you to use it. So. Right. Right, right, right. And you're even finding ways to use it in your personal life, you said? Sure, I use it for home tasks. We plan, we plan our kids' uh, birthday celebrations <laughs> in it. Uh, so uh, my wife and I will share a sheet about who's visiting for a graduation. My daughter's high school graduation is coming up. Congratulations. Uh, we actually post a form on Smartsheet <laughs> who's coming, <laughs> where are they staying. It, it, um, uh, the tag that I put up on the wall over there is people think I work for Smartsheet with how much we use it. So yes, it bleeds into the personal life, but why not? Right, yeah. exactly. It works, don't fix it. That's exactly. Exactly. Right. Mark, exactly. thank you so much for coming on the show. It was a lot of fun talking to My you. My pleasure, thank you. Thank, thank you. you both, thank you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Jeff Frick. Stay tuned of more of Engage 2019 here in Seattle. You're watching theCUBE.